Good evening. Calling the school committee to order for Thursday, April 6, 6.35 p.m. Uh, first order of business is the statement regarding recording. <clears throat> This meeting will be recorded and will be posted to YouTube and other social media platforms. By participating in this meeting, you understand that the recording could contain your video stream or your audio stream, including images of yourself or anyone in the room with you. If you choose to enable your video or audio device during the meeting, as well as anything or anyone else that may be in the background could be recorded. The recording could include any opinions you contribute and anything you say about yourself. On occasion, chat within the meeting could also be captured in the meeting recording. Therefore, anyone attending the recorded meeting may have aspects of their personal data recorded if they actively participate or not. Thank you. Um, and roll call for attendance, please. Dr. Allen? Yep. Mr. Mar uh, Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mr. Deschamps? Yes. Mr. Willanen? Present. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Garvey? Yes. Ms. Cartier? Here. Mrs. Chamberlain? Yes. Ms. Cormier? Here. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wiggler? Here. Mrs. Thompson? Here. Mr. Nutter? Here. Mr. Jean Francois? Chairman Brophy? Here. Um, on the agenda this evening, we need to move a couple of items. Our first item, uh, if there's no objection uh, from any school committee members, um, we're going to go into a request for executive session to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining. And then we'll return to open session and we'll uh, be moving towards the ratification of the QRTA collective bargaining agreement of 2023 26. So moved. Seconded. Okay, so there's no objection. Uh, and moved, seconded, and roll call to go in executive session. We figure about a half hour, 45 minutes. That's what we're trying to predict, but we'll see how it goes. No, no time limit on it. Uh, roll call for executive session, please. Dr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mr. Deschamps? Yes. Mr. Willannon? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Garvey? Yes. Ms. Cartier? Yes. Mrs. Chamberlain? Yes. Ms. Cormier? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wiggler? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Nutter? Yes. Mr. Jean Francois is not here at the moment. And Mr. Brophy? Yes. Okay. I'll close the door and we'll go. Okay. So who do we have? Remotely, Emily, Dave, Jenna. and Jenna. Okay. And Mr. McDonald. McDonald, okay. <clears throat> no one else is in. Um, not yet. We haven't moved into. Andrew hasn't moved us into the um, breakout room. The breakout room, but <clears throat> um, I would like, if possible, Mr. Wyman to also be um, included in executive session. He was a part of our. Team for negotiation. Not a problem. Andrew, can you move us into a breakout room? Okay, here we go. It was right. very fascinating. Okay. Went up to assistant engineering today. Oh, did you? Yeah. Was it good? Yeah, very School good. committee, uh, regular school committee back in order from executive session. Uh, before I go to back in the agenda, uh, again, as I mentioned, there were a couple of changes that we did. And again, thank you, colleagues, for the adjustment. Uh, we're now out of executive session and we're moving right to um, the ratification of the QRTA collective bargaining agreement for 2023-2026. I'm going to turn it over to um, Dave. Um, you can give a motion if you'd like. Do we vote? Yes, we already voted. Okay, I move... Uh that the uh, Quabbin Regional School District uh, Committee ratify the summary of agreement to the successive contract for the Quabbin Regional Teachers Association for the period of July 1st, 2023 through uh, June 30th, 2026. Second. Okay. 
Any further discussion? Seeing hearing none. Roll call. Please. Dr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mr. Deschamps? Yes. Mr. Willanen? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Garvey? Yes. Ms. Cartier? Yes. Mrs. Chamberlain? Yes. Ms. Cormier? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wiggler? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Nutter? Yes. Mr. Jean Francois? Yes. Mr. McQuestion? Yes. And Mr. Chairman? Yes. Okay. Again, thank you for that. Sorry for the length um, to the public. We um, had to have an executive session, but we're back into the full uh, regular agenda. We will do the approval of minutes. And then if uh, my colleagues do not object, I'd like to do the student advisory council right thereafter. Any objections? Move approval of the minutes. Okay. Second. Is there okay? Approval of the minutes and second. You have it at the, uh, are there any further discussion? Any omissions, deletions, corrections? Seeing and hearing none. Roll call. Dr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mr. Deschamps? Yes. Mr. Willinen? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Garvey? Yes. Ms. Cartier? Yes. Ms. Chamberlain? Yes. Ms. Cormier? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wiggler? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Nutter? Yes. Mr. Jean Francois? Yes. <coughs> and Mr. Chairman? Yes. Okay. And again, Student Advisory Council, we'll do that next. Dr. York. <laughs> We have two students um, joining us tonight. Um, I will let you introduce yourselves. I know uh, I think we have Ella and we, we had some students who couldn't make it because of the delay. So I think we have Ella Reeves and Troy Boudreaux, is that correct? Okay. And uh, they're gonna tell us a little bit about um, things that are happening in the middle school. So I know you have a slide. Would you like me to put your slide on the screen? Okay. One second here. There you go. Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Ella Reeves, and I'm an eighth grade student here at Quadrant. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you, and I'm very excited to share my experience. I'm a school choice student, and I'm so thankful that I'm able to attend school here. The academics have been amazing as the school has worked to always give me a challenge. I have learned so many things like how our government is set up, how to write a good essay, and how different types of weather are caused. However, my favorite subject is math. Quabin has helped me grow my knowledge by letting me take classes in the high school. That has been an amazing experience and I'm extremely grateful for that. Along with my classes, I also do a variety of sports and extracurriculars. I swim competitively for my local YMCA, have played soccer for the JV girls team, and run track and field for the middle school. The coaches for both soccer and track have been great, always extremely nice and skilled at helping my team and I have fun and improve. I'm so happy that I'm able to participate in sports here at Quabbin. I really enjoy them and they've helped me grow as a person and an athlete. I enjoy doing not just sports, but also extracurricular activities. One of them that I really enjoy is playing piano in the orchestra. Although I may not be the best at tuning a violin, I do enjoy learning many different pieces of music with my friends. Orchestra has been such a fun and rewarding experience and it is, as it is the best feeling when everything we have been working for comes together at the concert. Another extracurricular that I recently joined is the National Junior Honor Society. I was recently inducted into the NJHS and I'm so excited for what we will be doing in the near future. Another thing I am really looking forward to is the eighth grade's upcoming DC trip. I am so excited to see all the museums and memorials and learn more about the capital of the United States. I am so grateful that this school has given other students and me the opportunity to go on this trip. It will be a truly amazing experience. Thank you again for letting me share my experiences tonight. I'm so appreciative of all the great opportunities I've been given 
and amazing teachers and staff here at Clawler. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Any questions? Hi, you said you were school choice in. Uh, what um, attracted you to this district? Um, definitely the academics was a big part. Um, I feel like Coven has better academics than some of the other schools in my area. And also um, sports. Sports teams are pretty good here. Thank you. You did a great job. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Ella, have you been to DC before? Or is this your first time? This will be my first time. Great. I'm really excited for that. Great. Ella, I'm going to go as a chaperone. You're not in my group, but I already <laughs> got my, my assignment. But I don't, what bus are you on? I think I'm on bus two. Okay. <laughs> You'll have a blast. Yes. Can I tell you something about Ella that she didn't know until she got here tonight? Um, Ella entered a number of students from Bob and entered a contest. Um, <laughs> With the insurance industry for arson prevention posters, and Ellen won first place for Worcester County. Oh, wow. Congratulations. All right, my name is oh, I'm a little shaky. I was not too prepared. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. That's all right. All right, my name is Troy. I do three sports I do track indoor track and then I do golf. I did play baseball last year. That was pretty fun. Um, I made honors first two trimesters and I'm looking to do that for the last trimester. Um, I think in the next upcoming weeks, we are picking our classes. So I'm excited for that. One of my favorite classes like Ella, I really enjoy math. Um, another thing, I really like our electives here. Um, I don't know if you guys know Mr. Youngberg, Sorry, I'm a little shaky. <laughs> we can't even, we can't we can't even tell we can't that you're tell. shaky. We can't there tell. A lot of shaky people here. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mr. Youngberg, I got to say, he is like an amazing teacher. He teaches intro to IP classes. And that was like one of the most favorite, like that was my favorite class I've done all year. Such a good teacher. Um, do you guys have any questions? I mean... <laughs> I just have a comment. Absolutely. The fact that you both said you love math. <laughs> and I'm an English teacher, by the way, but I'm not insulted. Um, I think that's wonderful because you don't hear that too often. You know, um, you don't hear students say that they love math all too often. So I think that's great. I think that our freshman teachers or just our teachers in general, math. The math department, I would say, is our strongest department at Coabin. I mean, Ms. Trumbull, Ms. Carter, Ms. Pakinen, some of the best teachers that I know. I know Ms. Pakinen. I haven't had Mr. Goy. Um, Ms. Pakinen's a golf teacher. I mean, like, she she treats you as a friend. She's nice to you like a friend, but then she also is a very good helper. She's a good teacher. Same with Ms. Trumbull, girls, middle school track coach. I really like her. She's very nice. She jokes around with kids. She she really makes people feel comfortable in the classroom. And I think that's how I've kind of developed as a person with her help and other teachers help wanting to help us. Dr. Allen? Yeah, you guys are the reason we're here. And do what we do. And work as hard as we do. And don't give in if we can avoid it to cut the budget, cut them. Oh, you guys are, you know, you got to cut, 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 cut. But we want you to have the music and the sports and the, uh, the other things that you're talking about, the trips to Washington. Um, there'll be other trips down the line. Roxy's going to Europe uh, next year. And we had the, a, a German crew here, not much older than you from Berlin basketball group for a week and next year some of our kids are going over there and it, it's a whole world and you need to be ready for that and need to see it and understand it and this committee and administration and, and the faculty and all understand that and that's why we do what we do the way we do it's because of guys like you so thank you to the two of you any other comments or questions i have a couple that I always ask students when they come. You mentioned what you like. We also like to learn 
what we can improve on. So seriously, two things. A, for the couple of years, the past two or three years with FlexBlock, I'd like to know, was that a worthwhile experience and the way the schedule is, because we're making adjustments with the schedule. And second, what would you recommend we improve or what would you see more of? Okay, um, so I guess I'll start with um, what I think that you can improve. Um, I think that um, it would be nice if the high school had like more honors classes, especially okay. in ninth grade. Because when I've been signing up for classes and stuff, the only honors class is like math, and I'm already going to be in a different year anyway. So it's just going to be all regular classes. That's something we've been working <laughs> on when we went through the schedule for the coming year. We reflected back when we started trying to add more of this. You're right. We had two, and we now have about 18 or 20. So we're in sync with you on that one. We also have the, and if you look at AP, IB, if you'd like as well, because yeah. we've, we've always we've, we've tried to give more opportunities for all kids. So there are times that you can go in, push yourself a little more if you want. But those are other opportunities. That's why I'm glad that we are listening to students of what we need and that type of thing. In regards to the flex block and the relationships that learning, teaching and learning is all about. How is that? Um, yeah. Yeah. I absolutely love having flex block at the okay. beginning of the day. I've got to say that I feel like that was the smart thing to do because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you'll look at I mean, you look at some kids and they go home, just toss their papers in their bags. And then you come to school and you're like, oh, I have homework. I have homework. I have this to do. I have this. And it really gives you like an opportunity to actually like pass in work. And um, improvements. I don't like SEL. Uh, I don't know if you guys are yeah. like responsible for SEL. <laughs> we kind of are. Along with <laughs> we kind of are. <laughs> necessarily a big fan of it like SEL I feel like what you guys are reaching for I feel like that's a good idea you yes. guys, you guys have a goal in mind I feel like you are on the wrong path though I, I feel like instead of instead of like looking at a screen and like you're, you're thinking about it instead of looking at a screen why don't you like talk to us oh, like, go. that's what i want thank you that's what i wanted to hear thank you stay tuned so, yeah stay yes that will, thank you that will, that will be what happens next year so we we heard we heard many students give us that feedback and so i think you will um see some positive change next year yeah, i think sel is definitely a good thing to have in our classes but i feel like the way it's not really like um, students aren't really responding to it because when I always go to like Flexbox for SEL, um, everybody's like, oh, it's SEL day and nobody answers the questions. People just click through the slides and they're like, I'm done, I'm done. So I feel like um, that it's a, it's a really good idea, but I think we need like a different way to do it. Thank you. That's exactly what we need to hear. What is that? <laughs> 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 Um, I'm going to be completely honest. Yeah. I, uh, like you're going to feel like a, basically a kind of more on the negative side of SEL. SEL is where you basically have like a presentation kind of like put in front of you and you kind of are responsible for going through it. And I wouldn't say it's like necessarily guided, but it's like it has like uh. goals where it's like, I know there's one week it was about drugs, not doing drugs, but yeah. safety and that's other people. Um, I think I missed last SEL, so yesterday. Um, but it's like a slideshow and there's goals in mind that you have to like kind of look at and it's kind of per like, it's just, it's just like telling you not to do. Yeah. It's like, don't do drugs. But so, so was there a discussion between the kids after you see the slides? We just walk out. Just you're in your flex block. I feel like you sit down, you're, you put your Chromebook, you go through your SEL, and then you do homework. I feel like I feel like SEL is you try to get 
you get it over with. So you're like, oh, I have this math paper I have to do. I have, I have to quiz review, quiz corrections, like have to do this. And so you like try to push that aside always. Okay. So what percentage of the kids in your classes believe the same thing? I would say like 90%. Yeah. Um, yeah. Every time I've been in flex software, I see I'll just click through it and they're like, okay, now it's time for the stuff that I actually need to get done. Yeah. Instead of spending the whole block, like actually watching the videos and stuff. Thank you. I like the Ted Lasso video at least. Did you see that? One? <laughs> <laughs> that, was one of, that was one of the better ones. <laughs> to guide us through it. Um, mm -hmm. We actually had discussions and stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. I, yes. I just have one more quick thing I want to ask Absolutely. you about. Do you find uh, a lot of students being distracted by cell phones and earbuds? Tell me about that type of thing going on. For my personal experience, yeah. I think music helps me. Okay. I mean, it kind of like just blocks out everyone else. I'm listening to music. Like Miss Carter, I don't, I don't want to snitch on her, but <laughs> <laughs> she she lets us listen to music on quizzes and like mm -hmm. just like that. I don't know if that's like that's okay. yeah. widely accepted by you guys, the higher ups. <laughs> 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 but like it it helps me. I mean, I you listen, you like focus, you like. I mean, obviously not like blaring music but like just listening to music it's like your own comfort kind of thing because you go to school and you're I feel like you have to be somewhat uncomfortable at school because it's not like you're not like I don't know how to describe this so it's, it's like a it's a weird feeling you like go to school and you just you try to get it over with so you want to be as comfortable as possible and I feel like music kind of helps with that earbuds kind of helps with that listening to a podcast like stuff like that I think and cell phones I feel like not a lot of kids are distracted by cell phones I mean like obviously there is like cell phone usage I feel like you guys can't really get rid of that as much as you guys try because <laughs> everybody is snapchatting everyone's texting yeah. so um I mean it is somewhat of a problem but like I think the majority of people know when it's time to put their phone away it's time to do this time to like get work done so it's good to hear what kind of music do you like <laughs> um there's been controversy with this person i do like kanye a lot right <laughs> 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 now like with him i like that so um and coldplay i like coldplay okay can i make a recommendation <laughs> the soundtrack track from movie last of the mohegans <laughs> all right I'll, I'll definitely listen to that <laughs> and i just wanted to say thank you we love to hear from you we are making adjustments your point was well taken about your intent you have good intents we know what we're doing on that we need some tweaking and everything else and what you just said about what learning what's needed for learning and what comfortability is that's neurodiversity and that's what's needed for kids to be successful as well adults. So you are, and I hear, and we hear you, that you, you want to be involved and have good habits of learning and things like that. And not just the onesie of saying, go on the computer and do this and check a box because a check a box is not good habits. So thank you for sharing that with us. Truly. Anybody else? It was great listening. Yeah. 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 I, I Dr. Just, Dr. Mule. Really helpful. Good job. Very helpful. <laughs> you just did a wonderful job. Yeah. I just want you to know that Miss Hicks and uh, Miss Demarias are with us virtually, and they are both very proud of you tonight. So, yeah, look at uh, so they, they are here uh, supporting you from, from afar. So, and thank you very much. You did a wonderful job. Thank you, guys. Good. Very helpful. Thank you. More than welcome, but you can go. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, back to the agenda and thank you for the adjustments. Uh, administrative report, reports. Superintendent of schools. All right. I will um be brief. Uh, we are continuing to um, 
finalized strategic planning. Uh, as you know, we had hoped to have this wrapped up by now, but we do have one final meeting planned for next week. Can you pull up and, um, for a and we have, um, and then we expect to be ready to present the uh, new strategic plan at your May meeting. May meeting, okay. We did receive a school safety grant. We were one of 14 schools. Jess is going to put the, the um, report on the screen and momentarily. We're one of 14 schools and districts in the state to receive a $60,000 um, school safety grant. And this, um, this grant will be utilized by uh, the district to have a consultant come in and work with a team of, le of uh, safety leaders. We're going to have a, a safety team and they will be uh, working to do a comprehensive review of our entire district, our safety plans, and they will, um, they will make some recommendations that we, if, if something needs to be changed, we will incorporate those into our plans. They may also recommend um, some safety improvements to our facilities as well. So they're gonna look at our facilities, they're gonna look at our operations, they're gonna look at our safety plans, our procedures, and, and, and um, help us to, uh, to make sure that our plans are uh, state of the art. Dr. Allen, have a question? Yeah, sorry, Dr. Do we still have the policeman here? I just don't see or hear much about that. We've, we've had a transition with um, the uh, officer Gillespie, who was our uh, school resource officer, uh, left the department and um, took another position elsewhere. So I know that um, Chief Saborin is in the process of um, hiring uh, another, what, sorry. I, uh, I saw uh, Russell Davidson at the polls, and yeah, he's ready to go. Yeah, we. It's just it's a process. We do believe that it will be Officer Davidson, Sergeant oh, Davidson. He, did a good job. he he was wonderful. So we we do believe. I think it will be um, a, per a short period of time before he's actually back on board with us because they have they have because they have some vacancies. They have to fill some vacancies, but. We are we are um, anxiously anticipating uh, the return of our of our SRO, and we do believe that it will be a five day a week position um, that the SRO will be with us in the schools when that when that all happens. So, um, in the meantime, the Barry Police Department is incredibly responsive to any needs that we have. Wait. So, just kind of an aside. Um... It seems like the last five to eight years, there's a lot of police that just kind of move on. I mean, is that just Barry? Are the other towns experiencing that? Because, I mean, I used to know 20 years ago, you, you'd know all the, all the police in mm. town. And now it's like, I don't think I know any of them. Mm. I, I, you know. I think it's challenging. I think being a, being a police officer is is very, very challenging work. And I, and I think that... Um, you know, just like every other profession, it's it's really hard to recruit um, people to such challenging positions. And so I think it's I don't I don't think it's just a, an issue with Barry. Um, I think it's it's many, many uh, public servant um, positions. I even think for the school, I mean, if you know, if we have the same officer, you know, like this officer year after year, that's I think that's great for the kids because they can build it. Absolutely. But if we keep rolling, not we, but if you know, you get a new officer every half year or yeah. whatever, mm -hmm. that I mean, it doesn't defeat the purpose, but it doesn't certainly doesn't help. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Great. Consistency is key in the school district. Absolutely. So with this grant, um, the sixty thousand. Someone's coming in to help you tell you how to spend the money. Oh no, no, we know you got to pay for them out of that money. We're paying for that person out of that money. The money is devoted to paying the consultant and and stipends for our school safety team. The initial work to do this complete gotcha. analysis. We will also this actually where we haven't we have the bids are due for the, the consultant on the eleventh. Um, tonight. Oh, we did. <laughs> okay. Um, but we will also be supplementing this with this grant was only written for the middle high school. So this grant only applies to the middle high school. We are going to do a comprehensive 
um, review of all the safety plans across the district in all of the elementary schools and, and in central office. So we will be using some rural schools money to supplement this grant so that we have the ability to do the entire district. NEASC, um, re, our, we have received the final report of the NEASC um, accreditation committee. Um, I have just included commendations and recommendations in our um, in this school committee report, but there is also a link to the final NEASC report, and it is also on our website. So for your review, um, we had many, many commendations. Um, the recommendations primarily focus on um, continuing to build uh, knowledge and awareness of an alignment with the a vision of the graduate that we've developed and um, continuing to um, allow, create more and more opportunities for teacher collaboration around curriculum development. So um, one of the reasons yeah. that we put those provisions in the QRTA contract for teachers to work together on curriculum development um, has is related to our NEASC um, accreditation report. And it's so, also a copy in the drive. Oh, thank you. There's also a copy in your drive. Legislative updates. I did want to let you know that I have um, recently attended a couple of legislative meetings where legislators and other government officials um, were present. I have included a summary of those meetings in my report um, on last Saturday, I attended um, a Mass Municipal Association gathering in Western Mass um, with uh, many, many Western Mass. Um, I, I think there are only two superintendents in the room, but lots of select board members and um, and other in town administrators. Uh, this was gathering was really focused on rural communities and. The needs of rural communities, the Lieutenant Governor spoke, the, um, the um, new state auditor spoke. We had um, our, our, our legislative champions on rural school issues, Joe Comerford, Senator Joe Comerford and, and Representative Natalie Blay presented their, um, their presentations on their legislative initiatives. Um, I, um, meant to link, I think we put, I put the presentations that they presented in, the, just put them in the school committee drive for you. So um, we will, we will continue to um, watch for that. The, there were all of the concerns that we talk about here. I've said this many times about how rural communities are affected by um, the school funding formula, how rural communities are affected by um, the payment in lieu of tax formula, the um, challenges that rural communities have in maintaining their municipal facilities, um, the challenges that um, rural communities have in uh, Chapter 90 funding for their roads, for their road projects. You know, we could go on and on and on, but everything that our communities tell us about how challenging it is for them to pay for what they need and pay for what the schools need was echoed by every person in that room. Um, we did have uh, Dr. Marshall attended um, as the chair of the Barry Select Board, Jessica Sizer, the chair, the um, Barry Town Administrator was also in attendance as was Nicole Parker, who was the Hardwick, um, Hardwick Town Administrator. So there were, uh, Quabbin was, was somewhat well represented. I wish, uh, I think, I do believe the other community leaders were invited. Um, I wish they had attended because it was, um, it, it definitely sent the message that our communities are not alone, uh, we are not alone, and that there is some traction in state government. State government is aware of, of the challenges and they are working towards solutions. There were absolutely no promises other than, but there was definitely awareness. I will say, um, Lieutenant Governor Driscoll was, um, in my mind, surprisingly aware of the challenges. She was very well versed in um, how difficult these circumstances are for rural communities. And, and she reflected that in, in her remarks. So that was encouraging, um, you know, but money is what it's going to take. So. Um, Have you ever seen a statistic about how many 
acres and dollars the state doesn't fund for in, in payment the, in lieu of the districts well yes and it's actually in some of the presentations the state auditor's office has done a study of the formula for payment in lieu of taxes and how that formula um, negatively disadvantages, disadvantages rural communities and um, there have been some proposals to change that formula um, that would help increase the um, the amount that's paid for state-owned land in rural communities so the amount that's paid to rural communities it's almost as if the land in rural communities is devalued yeah. compared to the state-owned land in um, other communities like Plymouth, Mass, or Edgartown, or some of the more urban areas where there are large tracts. Plymouth has a tremendous <laughs> number of acres of state-owned land, and uh, their payment, their amount that they get for payment in lieu of taxes is much greater than a similar tract of land would be in the town of Hardwick or the town or any of the towns in Western. Or Barry, which has or Barry, tremendous Barry. amount. Shut Absolutely. the water off and see what they have to say. Well, <laughs> that point was made. That point was made at the meeting. We we provide a, a, a valuable resource in many ways to towns um, and cities east of us. Um, so so that was a very, very interesting meeting. And again, somewhat, somewhat um, encouraging. Um, also, there was a legislative meeting Resource. held uh, by the Mass Association of Regional Schools on Monday. There is the meeting was recorded. Mm -hmm. There's a link in the present in in the um, report that you can watch that entire meeting. There are many senators and representatives there. Again, uh, rural issues were front and center in those discussions, and um, the minimum aid problem for uh, districts with um, low and <laughs> declining enrollment was um, was front and center in those discussions. There are many, many, many school districts that are facing dire financial situations because of the thirty dollars minimum aid and declining enrollment. And many of those districts are represented at that meeting, and some of those stories were told. So it, it would be, it's, it was meetings about an hour and a half. It would be an interesting thing for you to watch and I encourage you to do so. Um, just moving on, school events. Um, Dr. I'm sorry. Uh, oh, I apologize. Go ahead. Yeah. Are we gonna get a copy of that report? Of your report? This report? I I should, is, is there a copy now? now? It not in your folder. Um, I thought I, I thought we put one. I can't find it in the drive either. It, it is now. Just, oh, it is. I just put it in. Yeah. Oh, oh, I didn't know it was in yeah. the drive. Okay. I didn't either. <laughs> That's I, just, I can I can pass my copy over. I thought I had one for you, Dr. Allen. I might. Well, you could just send me one. That would be sure. good because there's a lot of good stuff in there. I'd like to know. Absolutely. Can you just talk a little about what the director of the rural affairs? Oh, is I did not finish doing? my sentence. And I know. I, know. That's I what realized I was that. So. Our, <laughs> ask, but now that you did, I'd like to know more about it. <laughs> um, so it, it, there isn't a lot to know at this point. The the um, part of what what happened at that at this meeting was. Um, an opportunity for the participants to have input as to what the director of rural affairs will do. So the position has been um, established by the gov by the governor, um, yeah. and it is going to um, you know they mentioned things like technical assistance to rural communities for to help with economic development, um, looking at rural funding issues and making recommendations as to how to address those. So, but there isn't a job description yet. So uh, more to come on that. But again, it's encouraging that There's the governor has actually established this position. Um, it definitely shows that there is, there is attention being paid to the plight of rural communities. And um, that's a step in the right direction. So are there any, any uh, representatives yeah. other than uh, Lieutenant Governor from Eastern Massachusetts, or is it all? Um, the the Lieutenant Governor and the State Auditor, Diana, does, I don't know how to say oh. Yeah, and she um, she's from Melrose, I believe. Um, she also is uh, quite aware and supportive of 
you know, I mean, the state auditor can only do so much, um, but uh, she was, she, her, her office is the office that studied the uh, challenges, the, the inequities in the, in the formula for payment of low taxes, and they did it included in that um, information is a, is a quite an extensive presentation around why that is not an equitable formula and recommendations as to how to change it. So, um, yes. Glad and to uh, hear us. <laughs> <laughs> moving, uh, moving on, just, just want you to be aware, you know, this is the spring and there's lots of wonderful things happening in our schools. I would just encourage you to, um, to you know, watch for school newsletters, reach out to principals, um, check the district website for, for upcoming events and please try to participate if you can because we love to have school committee members at those events. Uh, it's great for our, our students to see you and it's great for you to see the wonderful things that are happening in all of our schools. Um, we're still working on the website. We're still on track to meet that June deadline um, for, um, for unveiling that that wonderful new website. And um, we have um, conducted our final interviews for the Hubbardston Center School principal. I did call a candidate. Um, and so before the end of the week, we should have a new Hubbardston principal or, or early next week. So um, we're excited about that. Although we are incredibly sad to see Mrs. Peterson um, leave our district, but she um, she will be with us through August. So we we look forward to to uh, her helping us with many 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 things over the summer. I'm not going to let her go one day one day before the end. So <laughs> sure, I put the ca up calendar in everyone's packet, and it will I'll update it in the drive as well as new events come up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's helpful. So moving on to teaching, learning, and support. Um, we, I think we have some redundancies between Sheila's oh, I'm our departments. No, not your fault. So I'll go quickly, but um, super busy time of the year. We always sort of acknowledge our teachers and the work they're doing and our students. And I thought this month it might be kind of fun to highlight our administrators, our building administrators. So MCAS is well underway. So uh, we've started MCAS in our elementary schools and our middle high school. Um, a lot of field trips are happening. You guys are aware of the DC trip. And also this is the time of year where our elementary students head off to nature's classroom um, at the end of May. And they're starting to plan their end of year um, field trips. We have a lot of informational nights coming up. We're offering summer programming. We do a kindergarten information night. We do a transition to sixth grade information night. All of those things are happening. Um, we recently administered student and staff feedback surveys. So uh, these are surveys that we assign to our students and they can report on um, their, their sort of um, rostered to one teacher. So we look at the B block and we say, whoever the student has for the B block teacher, we want them to give that teacher feedback. Uh, and they're asked questions about um, you know, the classroom is a warm, inviting place. You make connections with your teachers. Uh, do your teachers set high expectations for learning? Um, how do the other students in your class behave and act? Do they value learning? Different things like that. So our teachers um, have gotten those surveys. And then also we do staff feedback surveys for our building administrators. Administrators. So all of the teachers are assigned to the building administrator and they um, report out on the conditions of the school. So, um, you know, uh, again, same kinds of questions, but is the climate of the school a positive climate, a place where you want to come to work, do your colleagues support you? Um, are there areas of academic focus? Um, do you have support when you need it if uh, different things are happening? So we're underway with those feedback surveys. We also have um, all of the things that happen this time of year that our administrators need to think about budgets and schedules for next year um, and all of their typical day to day work as well. Sheila talked about the um, interviews for the Harvardson Center School. I will echo, uh, we will miss Principal Peterson for sure next year um, and we are going to fully utilize her um, through the summer. And also this is a time when we start really thinking about uh, 
what's our progress to date? So have we reached some of our academic goals? Are we making progress on some of the things uh, that we set out to do? And then really thinking about how to plan forward for that. Um, and some of the areas that we've kind of reviewed our progress on are we um, initiated some different um, things that we're working on. One was uh, better support to our students. So we revised the SSST progress, uh, process. We talked about that earlier in the subcommittee, the student support um, team pro process. We also um, currently, our principals and our teachers are undergoing all kinds of academic progress meetings and data review. We have all the intervention models. Um, down at the elementary level as well as our sixth grade. We are reviewing <laughs> and thinking about the make adjustments. We're doing that with our teacher team, really taking feedback from our teachers on what the impact on the students is so we can make uh, decisions about going into next year. And we've had a focus on attendance this past year. We recently got an effective practice grant. We could write for five different areas. <laughs> But what we focused on was the idea of inclusion and co-teaching. So we see um, gaps <laughs> with disabilities, and we felt this was a way that we could try and address some of those academic gaps. It's $300,000 over the course of three years, but they just gave it to us now. Um, so we have to spend 52000 of it before the end of the year, and then they'll sort of divvy out the rest of it over the next two years. Um, we just posted for an intervention to support our middle school to help us with that inclusion piece. And we plan to offer professional development in the area of inclusion and co-teaching. And we did get a continuation grant. We had previously had an SEL mental health grant and they offered us a little bit more money. Um, I think because we're using it wisely and we're seeing good things happening, but we're gonna focus on the interventions uh, for our students. And I'm going to just sort of pass it to Joe to talk about Innovation Pathway and... Um, Before you do, yeah, you mentioned programs for the summer. Tell us what they are. Sure. So if you remember last year, we were able to offer a five-week program completely free to families. We did an early literacy STEM camp over at Ruggles Lane. It was offered every day for five weeks from 8.30 to 2.30, roughly in the afternoon. <laughs> Free to families, all they had to do was provide transportation for their students, a snack and lunch. Um, and we also offered a STEM camp at the middle school. It ran about 8.15 to 2.15. Our teachers taught in it. We had a lot of student interns that came and supported our students. Um, and when we had gotten the first grant, it also offered this idea of a continuation grant. So we're guaranteed the money for this summer as well as next summer. For those two things. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. How many kids can each program take? Well, it's, uh, it's funny that you ask because we just put a survey out and we already have over 100 students interested. So we really have to, the, the positive thing is that last year we didn't have as much interest. So we purchased a lot of resources that we can use this summer. So we won't have to spend money on the resources or curriculum for it. So we'll be able to a lot more money to staffing to hopefully be able to have every student attend if they want to. That's our goal. Great. That's great. Yep. Um, I wanted to ask about your um, function. I had the opportunity to co-teach in a true co-teaching model for a couple of years, and it is something that I believe in and value, especially for those high need students. Um, do you have an existing program or is this it here that you hope to get it started with? Yeah, we do not have an existing program. There has been some work done in the district on co-teaching models, um, but we do not. And it would be the start of what we're hoping to achieve down the road. I had a very positive experience. Yeah. And if you, if you can do it, if you have the staffing, I mean, it's just, it's great for all kids. Even you know, not just the high needs kids, but those regular kids. Mm -hmm. so, right, yeah. I agree with you. Yeah, one hundred percent. I think teachers are also oh, they feel I, more fulfilled. Uh, oh, I, in those roles. I loved it. Highlight, highlight of my career. Those two years co teaching, loved it. 
maybe you can help us get it off the ground. <laughs> I'd love to. So I can talk about the Innovation Pathway Program. Um, I did want to say we uh, received notification from the uh, Department of Education or Department of Elementary and Secondary Education that we have been approved for the new business pathway program so that we're adding that as an additional pathway. Yes. Um, we are working with uh, uh, North Central Mass Hire to uh, be able to provide up to 20 summer uh, internships for students that are interested in working in STEM fields. Um, we're gonna be spend uh, some time this spring finding students that might be interested in participating and uh, securing uh, um, spots for them with businesses in the area. Um, and then I also wanted to mention, uh, we have three students going to the international DECA competition that will be held in um, Orlando. Uh, I think it starts on the 26th of April. Um, and we have one student that will be competing and we have two students that are in an early leadership um, program. Uh, that's a that's a part of that conference. So they'll be there for for three or four days, and I think that'll be a great experience for them. Um, <laughs> if it's okay, the Decker International Competition. Um, I got a I got a uh, a call from Dr. Muir and from uh, Jessica that uh, they needed approval pre approval before the thirteenth. We had the meeting on the sixth, meaning today, and it's an item. And so under new business, um, we have a request for approval for the DECA Distributive Education Club of America trip to Orlando for International Career Development Conference, April 21st to 26th. Um, th they needed approval ahead of time. So we, we are set up to give that pre-approval. We need to give the full approval. And I also asked uh, through the superintendent and Jess that when they come back, we'd like to have a report and hear how the students did and how it went and have the students probably at the May meeting I mentioned, but sure. I leave that up to the superintendent and Jess to take care of that. So Joe, if it's okay with you, perfect position on your report, I'm gonna ask the school committee, uh, is there a motion to so request moved. approval? Second. Moved. Is there a second? Okay. Um, roll call. Dr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Okay. Yes. Mr. Deschamps? Yes. Mr. Wolanin? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Garvey? Yes. Ms. Cartier? Yes. Mrs. Chamberlain? Yes. Ms. Cormier? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wiggler? Yes. Yes. Ms. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Yes. Nutter? Uh, Mr. Jean Francois has left the meeting and Chairman Brophy. Yes. Uh, Joe, real one quick question. Uh, congratulations on, on your team and everyone involved. The business pathway has fallen been approved. Um, what are the um, business um, overview? What how uh, what does it hit into? Marketing, design? I'm curious. What issues of business does it have from accounting? Can you give us a quick overview? Sure. There's um, hospitality and tourism, um, marketing, accounting, um, and business systems. I would say are the areas that we that we cover the the most. Those are sort of the highlights. Can be very fantastic. Can we also? I mean, are we able to like tap into state organizations and things like that? for internships? Uh, sure. I'm just uh, curious, I'm not... anything out in the North Central area here in Central Mass? This is fantastic. This is what, the fourth, third or fourth third. step? Third. 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 Yep, so. we have advanced manufacturing, information technology, and, and now business. Fantastic. Yeah, that's great news. Thank you. Okay, I think I'm next. Good evening, everyone. Kristen Campioni, Student Services Director. Um, I'll just start with our tiered focused monitoring audit um, that we've been working on for two years. 
We had a draft uh, report released yesterday. I'm pleased to report that we had no areas of non-compliance in special education, and we had two areas in civil rights. One was our um, discipline regarding um, students with disabilities, as well as our, um, uh, the other one was on our bullying intervention plan and policy. And we have since, uh, with your help, have cleaned up the bullying uh, plan and procedure as well as the policy. So that one is actually all resolved and we just have some work to do with some language in our student handbooks at the elementary and middle high school. So I'm thrilled to report that tonight. I'm glad the hard work part is over. Thank you to everyone who toured uh, DESE around their buildings, as well as thank you to all the office staff, the team chairs, uh, especially Jess, of course, um, Nancy Landry, and of course, Laura Holbrook, who was my coordinator, who I graciously shared with Colleen and Joe uh, at the beginning of this year. Uh, next, I'll just talk about, we have a CPAC meeting um, on April 10th at six o'clock. And this is uh, a focus for students with disabilities who are currently in fifth grade, going to grade six. And we'll have school adjustment counselors, guidance counselors, gen ed teachers, and team chairs will be in attendance to answer some questions as a panel that will be a virtual meeting at six o'clock on April 10th. Uh, I did include the link in your report. Please feel free to join us if you would like to. And then lastly, lastly, just an abbreviated schedule for Unified Sports Basketball. Our second season is starting uh, with Coach Zelneritis. And we have um, two home games that I was able to see on the schedule so far with Neshoba and North Middlesex. And then we're away at Lunenburg. So there are more games to be scheduled, but that was all that was available at the time of this report. So thank you very much for your time. And um, I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Mr. Walsh, would you like to uh, give us your report? Sure. Uh, so the punch list, uh, the um, change order went up to the vendor after Kevin and I went over it to make sure everything was in place. Um, they processed the order, we're waiting now on the vendor to actually receive the cameras. Um, if the last order was any indication, that's anywhere from two to three months for the shipping, uh, just because the supply chain on camera stuff is still so far behind. Uh, the programmers and installers are coming back next week to finish out the original punch list, we hope. Um, and then uh, that part of the, the original part of the project should be wrapped up. The web page is almost done with the development phase and it's now with the content migration team, which is where they are going to start migrating, creating web pages based on the templates we've designed and migrating some of the content that we want over. Most of the content we're going to be transferring ourselves. Um, we're hoping to get access to that site by the end of April, beginning of May, so we can start populating those pages to make that June deadline. Uh, the cybersecurity grant from the state, the first batch of training started uh, earlier this week where the, uh, the staff took a self-assessment and they will begin their self-guided training and then a post-assessment uh, in the next few weeks. Um, as Colleen said, MCAS has started and the tech department plays a large part in that because it's all computer-based. So we spend our mornings now at all the schools um, supporting the teachers and the students that are taking that. Um, the tech department closed 224 tickets this since the last school committee, committee meeting for a total of 2,253 since the start of the school year. We have posted a job for a technology position to replace an employee who's no longer with us. So we are currently now short staffed and covering those schools one man down. And that's all I have. Questions? Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. So last month we were had notif been notified by actually a town administrator in Hardwick of an opportunity to apply for a congressional directed spending request, a federal grant through uh, Senator Warren and uh, Markey. Markey's offices. Um, and it was due the next day. <laughs> so, um, um, I actually got it done. I wrote my first ever grant. Uh, and then it was delayed because of the snow day. So they did recognize it. And I said, here, we here. So we got it in and we're using the chiller project um, for this, if we get this grant. Unfortunately, at the time that we received all the information, they had no timeline released as to when we would know. So I'm not sure how that's gonna play into our plans. 
but we'll let you know. Um, we are working on updating the costs of that tiller replacement project with the vendor and engineer and a rigger. And if we can't get his pricing down that we are bidding through uh, SummerSwell, a, co a cooperative purchasing agreement, then we may decide to go out and bid um, <clears throat> the three different components of the project. We also are looking at getting the press box and bleacher system, as you know. Um, at this point, we have just over $16,000. I think it's $16,913. Six, uh, $16, $600 was received today, but we don't put it in the balance of the check, checks clear. Um, so we're, we're far from where we believe that project will, what will it cost us. We need to go out and get updated prices because that was actually priced out for us before COVID. So we're trying to get those together quickly. I just sent emails to all the town administrators asking them what the deadlines are for warning articles and what is our process for getting that done. I'll work with our bank to get the language we need to have for this borrowing, but until we get costs, we have no idea what we're looking what we're for. Um, Mr. Kevin Clark provided for you a list of what the projects have been going on in our buildings, and I don't want to go through those and take time, but you can look through everything that's been happening in our buildings on the energy side of things. Mr. Boagul provided us with the average monthly participation for school lunch. Um, if you redesign the report, it's a little easier to read, but if you have any questions, there is a blue block in there for Hubbardston, and that's because they had one less school day so far that they are making up in June. That was just to notify that. Um, and I did provide for you as you requested the grant reports. There's no new grant to report, although Ms. Muha did get a grant that just has to get all the paperwork so we don't put on the list until we receive all the paperwork. That's all I have for tonight. Um, sorry, the warrants. Uh, the warrants released since the last school committee meeting, payroll by weekly number 19 and 20, weekly number 37, 38, and 39, accounts payable. I need to make a correction to last month's report. I have been carrying a prescription for glasses in my pocketbook for over a year, and it was not um, 58 FQ, it was 50, uh, it was, oh my God, I got it wrong here, 58 FO for OCAM. Um, and I, I know that there was a problem because I'm like, why is there a quab in one number 59? So uh, the warrants released for March were 59 FQ, 60 B, 61 A, 62 B, 63 H, and 65 B. Fix this suggestion. Okay, that's, I don't have anything to put. Okay. Anything from athletics or? So there is um, there is a report from Mr. Myville um, in in the um, as contained in this report. He's uh, got over three hundred student athletes, um, and um, our teams are up and running. Uh, and he has included um, names of the coaches as well as. Um, I think we. I just signed the uh, the um, employment letter for our uh, middle school, I believe, baseball coach. Yeah. That was the last coach we hired. So it's been a little bit of a challenging uh, coaching hiring season in some in some for some teams. But he does have a link to all of the schedules for the athletic contests in um in your report as well as a list of all of the um of our coaches so we have um we have a robust spring schedule i just want to say thank you i think it's nice that the coaches are listed it really is it's nice to see yes i think it's um <laughs> really nice that we had a good picture and article mm -hmm. regarding the unified team and the barry yes. gazette last time I think that's the most wonderful thing. Agreed. I'm so glad we're involved in that. I, yeah. I just think, I, I wish, you know, people had thought of this 20, 25 years ago, but I, I'm really so pleased that we're involved in that. It's, it's an incredible opportunity for all of our students, and we are, we are really thankful that we are able to do that for, for our school. And um, Mr. Devine is next. So I just have a few things to talk about. Um, I just want to make you aware that the early college process that I that was discussed earlier in the year is continuing. We have an, um, a commitment from Worcester State University to partner with us um, with that process. And at this point, 
last year, the application had been released from the state, and I'm still waiting for that application to happen. It, it's it's still kind of in limbo. Um, and but Worcester State University has made that commitment to us. Now, in the meantime, um, Worcester State University reached out to me, uh, Ryan Forsyth, who's the vice president in terms of, in terms of their enrollment programming. Um, reached out to me and said that they have a funded dual enrollment program for students in Central Mass High Schools. Uh, I'm having a meeting tomorrow with their early college coordinator at Worcester State at two o'clock to get more information about that in hopes that, you know, he said that it would be this summer or in the fall where our students would be able to access um, dual enrollment courses at no cost. Beautiful. So I will find out more about that tomorrow. In terms of work-based learning, which is our internship program, we presently have 26 students in our work-based program. Um, one of those students is being paid by the state through a high school senior internship education project. This is a project that they made us aware of in July, and they did not fund it until March 27th. So that, that created a number of challenges over the course of the year um, in terms of communication and other things. But we do have one student doing that. She's working 20 hours a week with the sixth graders, and she'll get paid for up to 100 hours. And I've included information on that program um, and a, and a, um, a link there. The state, and Joe, Joe talked about this a little bit, it's also funding a STEM internship opportunity for students through the summer. Um, this is for students from 16 to 18 years old. We have, we've qualified for up to 10 students to participate in that program. Depending on what other school districts do, we may be able to get more seats for that. Um, and it's also for up to 125 hours. Again, I've gotten different information on that. We don't have the nuts and bolts about that. I see one document that says 125 hours and another document that says 100 hours. So we're not really sure where that stands right now and more information is forthcoming on that. Um, and I put a link there for that so that you can see a little bit more information about that. In terms of the post-grad support that, that we've been doing, they continue to develop work-based learning sites for students. And at this point they're proposing, the kids are proposing to sponsor a town-wide yard sale in New Braintree. Um, they're on the agenda for the New Braintree Select Board meeting on April 10th, 2023. And right now I have a young lady that hopefully is going to be able to present with me to the select board in New Braintree on Monday night. Um, and more information about that will be forthcoming. We're modeling it on some of the, the townwide yard sales they have in the other towns because they don't have that in New Braintree. And we thought that was a good opportunity for our kids to collect some materials, prepare them for sale, do an inventory, and start to get the idea of, of kind of doing a business, as well as doing some community outreach in the town of New Braintree. Um, the other thing our postgrads did is last Thursday, um, our postgrads had the opportunity to take a tour of Harvard Kilns, J. Air, offered to have our kids come over and look at what happens there. And I've never been there before, and it was completely fascinating. Um, if anybody has the chance to go down and see what happens at Harvard Kilns, the amount of lumber that sits in that yard is absolutely mind-boggling. It's literally, literally millions of board feet of lumber that goes through that place, and it takes about seven months for them to process it, and it goes it comes from all over the United States and goes all over the world, right from Hardwick. And it's, it's amazing what, what happens there. So special thanks to Jay Air. Um, he was wonderful with our kids. He was patient with those kids. He really took the time. We were there for about an hour and a half. He really took the time to, to let them see what happens there. He even, one of the kilns that aren't quite so hot, he let the kids go into the kiln and see how warm it was. It's, there's a kiln where they, it's about 140 degrees and, one of, the, we had, one of the kids wanted to stay there. <laughs> um, and the last thing I want to mention is we had a wonderful program um, this past month, the Credit for Life program. It's a program that existed. This is the 10th year that we participated in it, but it's, there's been a hiatus for the past three or four years with Country Bank. Uh, we were successful in getting a grant for $2,500 at the beginning of the year to be able to supply, give supplies to the kids, support some of the, the people that are working at, at the fair, but it's a literacy fair to show kids how, you know, they give kids a budget and a career and a credit, a credit rating. And they tell kids that they have this much money to work with, see how much you can come up with by the end of the month. And they go to different stations around the gym. Um, it really is a wonderful program. I really want to thank Jody Garolitis and Country Bank for, for their sponsorship of that. We also had, it was kind of nice. We had students from Lester High School and Eagle Hill School that were also here for that program. And so I always think it's nice to have other schools come because they're always so impressed with what we have. And so it's nice to hear that from other places. Um, I also want to thank Mr. Nutter and Mr. Deschamps, as well as the staff from, from the central office that volunteered to be at the um, Credit for Life program. Um, and it was really, you know, I've I'd love to get kind of get their impression. It's really a wonderful program. And the kids walk away from there with really valuable practical knowledge. And there is a link to Country Bank's Facebook page about that um, in the report. So thank you.
Greg, would you would you just want to share a little sneak peek of what we saw yesterday and what the sure. facilities were? We have the superintendent and I yesterday went to um, a roots program, which is in Gardner, it's run by Gamma. Um, the roots program is a innovative way for providing outpatient therapeutic services to adolescents from age 12 to 24 um, in a non-traditional setting. It's their, they have a nine-year, it seems like it's a nine-year research program, more or less, to determine whether or not um, this type of therapy is effective. And the type of therapy that it is, is going to, basically going to hang out and work on a farm. Um, and they, so they would spend time, they would meet with a therapist and an individual student might go out with a therapist and go out to the barnyard and, and look at the horses and this, and look at the relationships that exist between the five horses and the paddock and how they get along or don't get along and have, you know, and get the kids to reflect on some of the things that are going on there. Um, one of the most impressive statistics that they shared with us yesterday was that, um, most, the average number that of, of therapy sessions that an adolescent attends is two their their average number of sessions that an adolescent attends is 22 so they're very effective engaging and engaging kids and getting them to to kind of be involved um, they are in the process of working out with us an opportunity for two or three of they have three therapists for up to three of our kids to be able to go there at some point um, to receive that where i'm meeting with um, the middle school care team um, the guidance counselors, school adjustment counselors, administrators this coming week to hopefully identify two or three kids that really could use that. And at the other end, the Roots program at Gamma is going to work on providing transportation so that they can get our kids there. Um, it's, it's fully funded by the Department of Public Health. It will not cost the district or our kids a penny to access this. And we're hoping to kind of develop <clears throat> more of a relationship with that. The other thing that we're looking at too is the program that they have with telehealth and telecounseling through Haywood Hospital that's been successful in the Gardner Public Schools and some of the other public school systems in the northern part of Worcester County. Um, and, and Colleen Fors, who is um, one of our school adjustment counselors and works with the, you know, um, uh, what's, the, the, what's the program, Kristen, that we call that? Not the ALP. Therapeutic. Therapeutic, thank you. The therapeutic classroom. Um, she brought that to our attention again, and so we're, we're kind of exploring that. So we, we, we recognize the value of providing support for our students in these kinds of ways, and we also recognize the need because we have such, it, this is kind of like a desert for adolescent care in terms of the area where we live. Our kids either need to go, you know, as I said yesterday, they have to go to Palmer, they have to go to Worcester, they have to go to Springfield, they, there's very little here, um, this program in Gardner. Yeah, it's a half an hour away, but they're going to send a van to get those kids, and that's that's going to be really appreciated. And they were very confident to be able to provide us with transportation. And I really do appreciate that Dr. Miro was able to kind of join me to go visit that place. I think it was freezing cold, it was, but it was um it, it was really quite an impressive place. They're doing wonderful work. You said roots, roots, roots by Gamma. Yeah, yeah. It's and, um, it's a, what is it? Evergreen. It's yeah. Evergreen. It's, yeah, it's at their Evergreen facility. Yes. Um, they have 115 acres right on 140. Okay. Um, right by where the old, um, like, Gardner Hospital was, the, the front side of it. Um, and they are just, they are being very great. Beautiful. Um, so it's a working farm? It's a working, well, yeah, it's a working farm. It's, it's actually, you know what, it's not really a working farm. What it is, it's, it's, a, it's a farm animal rescue. Okay. Yes. That's what it is. So, like, if, if they, if you, if you have a pot belly pig that you can't take care of anymore, and you call them, they will probably come and get it. Um, they have pot belly pigs. They have pygmy goats. They have big goats. They have Newfoundland ponies. The guy was telling us there's only 500 Newfoundland ponies in the whole world left, and they have five of them. Um, they have donkeys. They have horses. They have geese. They have tur they have all kinds of stuff. Um, and they were fascinating. And their their whole their whole take on it really was to guide the students through reflection on the behaviors of the animals and how that reflects their own behaviors. It was just a fascinating, fascinating. Kind of system and way of doing things. And By personal experience, I think cows are the best. Yes, they didn't have any cows. Have. Not have any cows, no. They're the best yeah. things. They didn't have any cows. Um, but it, it's, and it's, and it's a 
It's also a program that's funded in different parts of, of the state. There's, there's, an, there's an equine program in Framingham. There's a, a wilderness adventure program that, that Luck is doing, and it's all um, being funded through the Department of Public Health. But we made this connect. Actually, the superintendent made the connection through GAMMA and the, this ROOTS program. I think they were made aware of it because it CAPS Collaborative. Is that right? Well, there are other districts in the area are accessing it. So CAPS Collaborative is one. Uh, the Ashburnham Westminster Gardner um, School District. I, I think our challenge, as Greg said, is transportation. Um, it's you know if you live in Gardner or you, you or you go to school in Gardner, um, it's easy for to get on a city some sort of or you know public transit and get to this. Most of the students access the program after school hours. They go for a, one hour a week, and most of the students access the program after school hours. Um, but they are at capacity um, for their after school slots. So we are exploring the benefit for some of our students who have great needs to maybe take in a couple of hours out of their school day and access the program. It's a very, very limited access right now because again, we're close to the end of the school year and we do not have transportation. They have limited funding for transportation. We are hopefully exploring some additional transportation options for the future because this is a program that they could provide us a greater number of slots if we could work out some transportation. So we hope that it will expand in the future. Um, but we're also, as, as Greg said, with the help of many other people in the district, exploring as many options as we can to provide um mental health and substance use substance um uh, use disorder treatment and and um, recovery for our students as as we can and the resources are very scarce so we're, we're working hard to find whatever we can thank you fantastic thank you thorough report once again and nice to know what's happening in ellie's in all the areas as well. Uh, Teacher Advisory Council. Mr. Berenger is not here tonight. Subcommittee reports, administrative review. Audit, nothing. Oh, nothing. Okay. I keep forgetting that that's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's been a quiet, quiet year this year. Nothing. Okay. Uh, budget. Yes. Um, we have not had a budget meeting since our uh, public hearing and uh, school public hearing and school committee meeting uh, the last month. The budget still stands at a uh, 7.9% increase. And as, as we've been made aware, I've been made aware, it's, it's still a significant reach, represents a significant reach for our towns in, in terms of assessment. Uh, we expect house numbers to come out, um, looks like August 12th, and you all received an email today asking you about your availability for a couple of different uh, possible sessions. At first, we were going to do a budget committee meeting and then a school committee meeting. But the bottom line is uh, it appears we're going to need a vote very shortly after the budget. So a combined meeting on either the 13th, if the numbers come out on the 12th, or the 18th, if the numbers don't come out. And I, it's going to be a tight turn around there figuring out whether you said August mark April means April. April. Did I, did I say August? Yeah. yeah. Really. Well, ho August. Hopefully, hopefully we're not talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's no guarantee. But um, you know, for, for April, we've got the 13th and the 18th that um, are, are tentative meetings per se. And hopefully the numbers do come out on the 12th. The um, second portion of, of uh of the budget report is you do have in front of you a fiscal year 23, the current year we're in. This is the time of year where we're making adjustments at the end of the year to, uh, to our appropriations control. And uh, we've got a number of different items which are listed at the bottom. And can these all go as one motion or uh, you want four different motions? I don't think we have any conflicts any longer, right? Let's just go with one. Okay, I'm, I'm going to make a motion that, that covers these transfers to hopefully, uh, you know, put our budget in sync. One, I move to 
A, transfer $658 from 2110-3200 instructional support and $391 from 3510-3520 athletics and student activities to 4110-4300 buildings and grounds to cover the cost of furniture not budgeted for. B, transfer $206 from 1100-1435 district administration and legal to 5260 fixed charges to cover the actual costs of business insurance policy renewals. C, transfer $229,807 from 9,000 special education tuition to 1450 special education administrative technology and support and 3,300 special education transportation. And D, transfer $4,800 from 2110-3200 instructional support, 50,000 from 3,300 transportation, 500 from 3,400 school nutrition services, and 37,000 from 3,600 school security to 9,000 tuition for school choice and charter school assessments. Second. Any further questions, comments? Hearing none, roll call. Dr. Yes. Allen? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mr. Deschamps? Yes. Mr. Willannon? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Garvey? Yes. Ms. Cartier? Yes. Ms. Chamberlain? Yes. Ms. Cormier? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wiggler? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Nutter? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, so I agree, Mark. Um, that email went out. So when we get the turnaround date, we'll have a committee of the whole and we'll have a full meeting. You might know before the 12th that it's not being released on the 12th. You never know. <laughs> no, no, actually, it's being released a, a week before it generally is. All right. um, I spoke with Julie Kelly. She seems to have her pulse on this, and she says it will be released on the 12th. But generally, DESC needs to take what the legislature votes and then put it down into the district numbers. So I, I'm thinking it's not going to come out until the 13th, but we're, we're going to try to get it to work. Okay. And so, what, what's the purpose of this? Is this to see if we have more money so we can lower the assessment? Right. Well, we've we've been working, the administrative team has been working to make some cuts in the budget proposal that went before you for the public hearing. We've got some proposals of maybe using some, making some changes to the projected revenue sources and to see if we get more out of the house budget. Um, and we also need to send assessment letters to the towns by April 28th. Um, so we need to, if we're going to make changes, we need to take a vote to make those changes and send those assessment letters out. Most people are very optimistic about the house numbers. Right? <laughs> mm. Actually, Sheila was. So, so, so no, hopefully, we'll get optimistic. some additional resources. Somewhat optimistic. <laughs> and uh, we can hopefully make some. And the administration. Two downward changes. And they've been looking yes. too. They've been looking to make we've some say, adjustments and things like that. that we can. So, mm -hmm. um, uh, central office, I think. Collect the bargaining. We've had uh, preliminary meetings. Uh, preliminary meeting would be setting the ground rules and scheduling two future meetings with the secretaries, the custodians, the office association, and the nutrition staff. And we had our first negotiation meeting with the paraprofessionals. And it's all ongoing through, we're scheduled out through May and ongoing. Oh, did you mention the custodians too? I did. Okay, good. Did I? Good. Yeah, yeah, yes. You got them all. Good. The five groups. Uh, buildings and grounds. Enough. Policy review and reform. October. Okay. Student services report. Well, Kristen spoke, uh, but we also had um, her team chairs persons there tonight, which probably took up most of the meeting, but yeah. it was just nice to hear them speak about what over 700 students that they're servicing, which is very difficult, I think, because, you know, they travel school to school to school to try to handle everybody. Um, they talked about the NET program and how we were transitioning, transitioning to our own and how that's working. I think staffing's a little bit of an issue at times, but 
I kind of feel for those chair people. <laughs> you know, that's a lot of work. Good. And how it all falls to put into play with parents and kids and teachers and administrators. <clears throat> it's a task. Thank you. Uh, technology. Mr. Walsh took care of the, the report. Okay. Uh, ad hoc school district configuration. Even if I wanted to buy a day to have a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out to June, mid June already. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. And then uh, the superintendent search. We have been busy. We held our first meeting, the orientation with the screening committee and Liz LaFon from MASC. So we have a 16 member screening committee, um, which is a good number, it's manageable. We have a great group. Um, I think, you know, just put together a great, did a great job with the lottery and choosing. And we have, we have a lot of people with all the right backgrounds. I think that we'll have some, we'll, It'll be very productive and um, we're really looking forward to getting started. So the applications close tomorrow is the deadline. And we are meeting on Tuesday. Our meetings from this point will have to go into executive yeah, session. session. Um, and that's that was a lot of the things we went over at the orientation was open meeting laws and the confidentiality because all of the applicants at this point will be confidential. Um, and we will review all, we'll get the applications over the weekend and review them over the weekend. And then as a group on the 11th will be our meeting to decide who moves forward. The week of April 24th is when we will hold the interviews with those individuals that we choose to move forward to interview stage. Um, those again will still be in executive session. So we're not sure, mm -hmm. we've kind of blocked that whole week and even a potential of Saturday, <clears throat> if necessary, depending on how many applicants we decide to interview. And then moving, we also um, have the survey out and they've been getting a lot of responses on that. So I know the school's been great and the towns have been great putting that out. So make sure anyone listening or did you fill out the survey so we have everyone's perspectives captured and then we plan to bring to the full school committee the finalists and plan to conduct those interviews the week of May 22nd with all of us present and at that time the names will become public and those will be held in open session so we're really excited and looking forward to the deadline closing tomorrow and rolling our sleeves up and Choosing our next superintendent. <laughs> but you could change your mind. <laughs> I know. So That's I'm... still on the table. <laughs> you have another day to apply. <laughs> so again, thank you for all the work, both of you. Um, you have a committee of what, 16? The screening committee, committee is 16? 16, I think is where we landed. And then we'll, whatever you determine to recommend to the full committee um, will be the finalists. And I think you said between three to five, it could be depending on what you see through this process. We decided at the subcommittee level not to put any number on any of okay. the interviews, how okay. many candidates we would move forward for semi-finalist interviews or finalists, but we anticipate probably a manageable number around okay. three to five. And we'll probably need more than one night for the finalist interview. Yes, we're gonna block Two, that week. Anyway, maybe three. And also in the meantime, in between those finalists and semifinal, the semifinalists and finalist interviews, there will be visits both to our district and theirs and a lot of those things going on as well in that interim period of time. And just so the committee members know that that's, again, that's the work and thank you of the, the subcommittee screening for doing all that. So then when we get the finalists, and then it will be our job and we'll take from that and go from there. Or obviously we would work with the, the screen committee of how we do that. And then we'll decide as a committee when we'll deal with the next steps of how many questions we'll do and everything else. So um, I, I came and listened 
I was an observer that last week. I wanted to stay here on the confidentiality piece. Now we're now it's closed. Going forward, it's closed as it goes forward because there is a confidentiality piece in this. But I just want to echo the work that you have 16 people to be able to get A, and they are duly sworn in. That was a good point you should make, is that the confidentiality is very, very important from this stage. Sworn in, actually. Yeah. No, we did not have to. Oh, oh, you don't, but it was like given? It was like given. It was given. Yes. We didn't have because to be officially sworn in by... We signed papers. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Confidentiality signed. papers. It's like signed. 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 Other and they would disclose your papers if need be, right? By anyone who might be related to someone who works at this, you know, in the district or whatever. So I just want to echo disclosure. Thank you for the full committee to be able to do, and for the folks that have stepped up We're to say to do that, and um, look forward to. It's a big ask. It's a big ask to <laughs> attend a lot of meetings, and it's important work, and to have these people come forward and want to be part of the process is it's helpful to us but it's you know it's just in true Corbin fashion everybody just wants to roll up their sleeves and help out we couldn't do it without them uh no unfinished business uh any public comment i just make a comment Yes. I'd like to congratulate Mr. Marsh on being reelected to the school committee. <laughs> yeah. That's good. His son came in. Yeah, he had. Uh, yeah. <laughs> very good. Congratulations, Mr. Marsh. Thank you. Uh, no public comment? No. Uh, any school committee concerns? Dr. Allen. Yeah, three things. First off, Capstone. I was reading a story in the Worcester Telegram about three or four weeks ago about one of our kids in the Capstone Project. And he, what's that stuff? Is it Narcan or something mm -hmm. like that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That he was collecting or bringing together so that somebody who had had a drug overdose could be rehabilitated or re, re something or other, uh, brought back from death or revived. That's the term. And I thought, you know, that's nice. We have this project and it gets a write up in the Worcester paper from some of our, one of our kids. So that, that's good. Two, this DECA business club, they asked me to come in and talk to them. I spent a couple hours with them a few weeks ago. And it was great because, as you know, they went down to Worcester. And I think they had five of them that went to the state mm -hmm. finals. And one of them then went to the, not the national, international. Now, I know this was already reported, but it was kind of exciting. And two others, so one is Therese Salvador's boy, mm -hmm. who I think is said is president of the sophomore class. But they're going down to a workshop down there, and we're looking to raise money. But this is a new program. It sounds really terrific. The kids are enthusiastic. The one that won, he wants to go to California. He's looking for, what was that school Hank Gathers died at? Basketball player. Oh, um, Marymount. Was it? I, I want to say Marymount, but I'm not sure if that's it. It's but anyway, Marymount, New York, I, Long Island. I, he wants to go to that school, but anyway, I, I think it starts with them. But I, I, I think it's <laughs> well, it was great talking to them, and I think it's tomorrow morning is the change of command at ROTC, and Summer Barringer is rotating out. Evan's, Evan's daughter, who has been here and so forth, and had lunch with, or dinner with her at that spaghetti dinner, the ROTC spaghetti dinner. John came over. Some of you know, John was a school committee member off and on for a number of years, too. So that was, that was kind of nice. That's right. Great. Good. Yes, sir. Back to the credit for like a couple of observations. I counted six Quabbin alumni that were employees of the uh, uh, country bank, number one. One of the one of our former graduates, I worked with her in, in the booth that I was in, and she talked about the fact that when she graduated from Quabbin, she really didn't know what she wanted to do. She went to work for country bank. Country bank paid for her, her education, 
She got an associate's degree. She's got a professional job and she's, her children are, uh, she's got young children anyways. But anyway, it was, I thought it was really interesting that the kids that we had in school are now working in the community and they're accessing uh, resources. Right, right in their area of employment and country bank is, is doing that for them. So I think it's a really good, it's a credit to the country bank. Mm -hmm. Yes. I just want to say thank you to all the staff, teachers, administrators that work hard each and every day for our students. And with MCAS upon us, I wish everybody luck. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope they enjoy their April vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. All right, and we have just two more items left uh, on the new business. We have an appointment of the treasurer, um, the previous treasurer. As I reported to you in the fall, Mr. Ron Christensen, who has been our treasurer since I've been here for that's 22 years, is retiring from Livingston and Haynes, which is the certified public accountant firm that he works for. And uh, both he and Ms. Kathleen Borsier, who is our assistant treasurer, have written letters to the school committee that I'll get to you um, to request. I think I'll read her letter to you, if I may. Um, Dear school committee, as you know, Ronald Christensen will be retiring from Livingston and Haynes, PC, April 30th, 2023. The two of us that have been working together as treasurer and assistant treasurer for the school district for many years, I would appreciate your consideration of me taking over the role as treasurer and Ron as assistant treasurer. Ron will be assisting me in the areas that I did not get involved in as assistant treasurer. I'm confident that this will be a smooth transition. I would appreciate your vote on this change of positions. Very truly yours, Kathleen Borsier. Borsier. So moved. Second. Okay, so moved. Second for the discussion. Roll call, please. Dr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mr. Deschamps? Yes. Mr. Willannon? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Garvey? Yes. Ms. Cartier? Yes. Ms. Chamberlain? Yes. Mr. Chamberlain? Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Cormier? Yes. Getting late. Mr. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wiggler? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Nutter? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Thank you for that vote. I just want to say that my whole staff is so thankful that Mrs. Borsier will take this over because we did not want to go through a change of treasurers. <laughs> we were very happy when they contacted us in the fall and said, hey, we just want to flip on. Thank God. Thank you for that vote. I'll inform them tomorrow. And then uh, the other one is the school choice 2023-24. I'm going to turn over the superintendent and we'll go from there. So we do have um, school choice openings for uh, the upcoming school year. And um, there is an annual vote required of the school committee to um, become a school choice district. And so um, we would propose that, um, that we continue to um, accept students from school choice where we have, where we have openings that will not. So vote. moved. So moved. Second. Second. And a second was Mark, or Mark first, quick, quickly. And just as Dr. Muir said for comments, um, Ed Reform Law 93 made districts all school choice, but then the, you then make the vote and clarify what you need to. And I think you made it clear, Dr. Muir. You made it clear about where the openings would be because of the vote. So, any other comments? Yeah. Uh, yes. I think we heard earlier tonight why. Uh, why we yes. really stole the virtues of school choice because we have a school that is very popular because we offer mm -hmm. courses. We have we still have athletics perform at a, at a decent level, and you know the the fact the fact is is as it was you just pointed out we have you know, very good staff. Talked about the teachers outrageous. You know, uh, math teachers, math is the, the number one program. Yes. Well, I wish that was, I wish that was my number one program when I was a kid. But, you know, fanta fantastic job that we do. And I, and I always bring out, when somebody talks about the budget, I always say, well, you we gotta be doing something right. Like almost 300 kids come here from other districts. I mean, that's the proof of the pudding, really, as I see it. You boil it down to that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ned, well said. 
I'm good. You good? Okay. Um, any other comment? Roll call, please. Dr. Allen? Yes. Mr. Marsh? Yes. Mr. Deschamps? Yes. Mr. Willannon? Yes. Mr. Kelly? Yes. Ms. Garvey? Yes. Ms. Cartier? Yes. Ms. Uh, Mrs. Chamberlain? Yes. Ms. Cormier? Yes. Mr. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Wiggler? Yes. Mrs. Thompson? Yes. Mr. Nutter? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? Well, we adjourn. I think it adjourn. should be Ned. Second. Yeah, right, right, Ned. 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 Did you make a motion to adjourn? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a second? Yeah. We will Dick, miss Dick, you, Dick. Dick.